Tim, thank you very much for seeing us here at Grenson's HQ. This is amazing, your, your empire out there on the factory floor. Yeah, this is it. This is the new factory. We've been here for two years, having been in the last factory for nearly 100 years. So, wow. yeah, still quite new to us. Well, I mean, this is it, because obviously Grenson's are the name on everybody's lips slash feet at the minute, but obviously it's a, it's a brand with a lot of history. How, how far does the Grenson story go back? Well, Grenson was started in 1866, so next year's our 150th anniversary, which is um, really exciting, a little bit scary as well, but really exciting. Um, and it's been continuous production since, literally since 1866 and always within half a mile of where we are now. So um, a lot of the people who work here, uh, are, um, their ancestors worked here many, many years ago. So it's a very kind of lovely kind of heritage historical story. So I've got my pair, one of my pairs of Grensons on today, which I love because when I wear them in the street, you get like, like the nod from other yeah. Grensons wearers. Sometimes they'll be like, yeah. yeah, well done, good boot. I mean, how long would it take to make a boot like this? Like how many stages are there in the production process? So <clears throat> a boot like that, the stages would be about something like 200 to 250 different separate operations. So here, for example, the leather literally comes in, we talk about skin to box, where the leather comes in the doorway at the back there, goes all the way through the processes and ends up as a pair of shoes at the end. And it's about 200 to 250 operations, depending on what the shoe is. It would take us about, start to finish, probably about two weeks to make a pair like that. But part of that time is the, the shoe actually sitting on the last. So the longer the leather can actually sit on the last and basically rest, the more it adopts the shape of the last. Whereas in, in China, for example, they have a rule about what they call the five minute shoe, which is anything under five minutes. If it takes longer than five minutes to make, it's not commercial. So Tim, for me, the Brogue was my Grenson's gateway shoe into this, this world of, of footwear delight. Is that always the case for women? Is that usually the case? Not necessarily, oh, right. no, not necessarily for women. Because um, some, for some women, it's too, too obviously a man shoe. Um, for, it's still our best seller for women, definitely. But there are women who say, I'm not sure about that. I want something a bit softer. I want softer looking, I mean, um, like a loafer. Loafers are very big for us, for women. And um, it, it's a very personal thing. I think, it's, um, I think this type of shoe is a great thing. I think a lot of women are coming to a flat shoe now and thinking, um, yeah, I'll, I'll still have the heels, I want the heels for certain things. But to go out in the day, I feel so much kind of more confident and cool and relaxed in a pair of flat shoes like this and not kind of falling over and clipping down on the heels and tripping over the pavement when running to something. And, a, and before, they maybe looked frumpy when you were wearing them, but if we can make them look more interesting, cooler and more, you know, and I think the, the time is right, basically. I think it's happened a lot in fashion, and men's and women's fashion has come together a bit more. As you say, people are looking for simple, iconic things um, that last and are a bit more timeless and what have you. And I think, yeah, I, I think now's the time, hopefully. OK. So when did you introduce the women's line? Tell me a little bit about that. It was about three years ago, and um, we'd seen it in the history of Grenson that they'd introduced women's two or three times and it had run for a few years and then kind of stopped. Um, and we kind of thought, mm, maybe we're going to have the same thing where it might work for a little bit and then stop or are we going to be seen as a men, more of a men's brand. But we had so many um, women were kind of emailing and phoning and asking us in the stores could we do some of these shoes for women? Could we do them in smaller sizes? Could we do them narrower? Could we do them in slightly brighter colors or whatever? And it, it became often, it, like you, often it was um, somebody's boyfriend or husband or partner who would say, you should try, you know, you should try these. And um, so we went for it and we tried it. We started off literally replicating the men's shoes for women's for the first two seasons. Then we started introducing color a lot more colour, silver, gold, um, uh, fluorescent, all kinds of things. Some worked, some didn't, some were horrendous. Um, and, then, um, and then it's kind of developed from there. Now we do quite a lot of the styles are specific to women. 
Um, so what's next then? We've got we've done uh, autumn winter, and you've told yeah. us about your French brogue. I mean, look into the future. Obviously, you know you're designing a year ahead. Where's your yeah. head at, and what are you thinking? <clears throat> well, um, I'm all over the place <laughs> at the moment. We, I've briefed in quite a few weird, weird, and wonderful things. Um, we've briefed in some quite um, high boots. Wanted to like have a go at like quite a high, high boot. See how that works. Um, uh, so we did, we did, we, we did for spring summer. We did um, sandals for the first time, but uh, but a proper brogy sandal type thing, and um, playing around as I said before with shearling, doing um, some really luxurious linings to shoes and things, so they're really comfortable and gorgeous and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, and lots of loafers still. Loafers are still big, yeah. And what about metallics? Are metallics here to stay? Metallics are big, yeah. They're still big. And um, every, every season, people get drawn to the, the metallics. So with women's, what's really exciting is that we get to spend, in the design department, we get to spend a lot more time looking at leathers and materials. With women's, you can have a field day, you can play around, anything that's really gorgeous and looks lovely, it doesn't matter how brave it is, it will work if it looks good, if it looks right. What about looking ahead to you know, brand expanding? As you say, you're quite conscious to, to stick to what you do really, really well, but you know, people must be asking you in terms of other accessories, what's next and, and how far beyond shoes will it go? Um, yeah, we've been really careful to stick to what we know and, and kind of get it right and, and not jump into a thousand things. You know, those, uh, and I also quite like the idea of um, buying a watch from a watch company and buying a shoe from a shoe company and a bag from, you know, people who specialise in things. I quite like that idea. So I wanted us to stick to what we know. Um, however, I think a natural progression is um, bags and leather accessories and wallets and things. So watch this space. That's the next problem to solve. I wish you luck with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>